a, a sermon that has been on my heart for a little bit. As I watch what's happening around, you know, you hear people's encounters and experiences every day. And you, you have this burden as a pastor walking with, you know, and sometimes I wish I had that power where I could snap my fingers and people's problems go away. That's how I feel about you. I love you enough to say, God, I wish I could just do this and you're okay. But it becomes hard, church, when you're serving God the best way you know how. But problems are right there. It becomes hard when you listen to all that bishop says and you respond. And you listen to what the scripture says and you respond. And you're thinking that out of that response, there needs to be some kind of favor. Because you're just being obedient to the word. But yet, problems are there. You plan your life. And you submit it to God. And you're saying, God, I'm willing to serve you until I die. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. But then you get some news that something is going wrong in your life. You have healthy family members. Look healthy. Sound healthy. Doing things that are healthy. And then all of a sudden, there's news of sickness or pain or sometimes even death. You have great prospects at work, but all of a sudden, you're fired or you're laid off or something like that. You were doing well last year in school. Good grades, pure A's, en route to scholarship, being on the dean's honor roll. But all of a sudden, this semester, things take a dip. And you say, God, where are you? Where are you? But could you turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans? Chapter 8. I'll read two verses. Actually three. From verse 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8. The NIV version says. And we know that in all things. God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. For those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Turn to your neighbor and just say, it's working out. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody else. Probably that was a person on your left. Turn to your right and say to somebody, it's working out. Now, in no way does this refer to a gym exercise. Because that's of a different nature. But this refers to some things that you're going through right now. And logically you can't explain it. Because it doesn't seem to be fair and right. But God says it's working out. Brothers and sisters, the book of Romans is believed by many as a heavy hitter. It is said to be the New Testament's. Manual of salvation. If you want to understand the work of Christ, the work of the Spirit, and how we respond to this, read the book of Romans. We say to every new convert, read the book of Romans. It helps us to understand who we are and what God has done in our lives. We say to those who are questioning their sonship or their place in God, you're questioning whether you're saved or not. You're wondering if you are really part of the family of God. Read the book of Romans. There's some heavy content in there, but it is simple enough for you to understand the basics of the Christian faith. Of course, the book of Romans, written by Paul, 
is written to a set of believers. Hence, you realize that there's this heavy content that's geared towards believers because the book was actually written to believers. So in Romans chapter 8, just in the previous verses, we hear Paul talking about the sufferings of this life and how much you can't compare that to the glory that awaits us. In other words, Paul is saying to the church, the Roman church, that what you're going through right now cannot be compared to that which awaits you. Because church, though this world is packed with problems, though we're faced with difficulties on a daily basis, that which God has prepared for us is far more exceeding. In fact, when you start to reap the benefits of eternal life, you won't even think about the problems that you go through on earth. So Paul is saying to us that we should consider that. We also hear him saying that we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit prays for us through groaning but now we who didn't know how to pray Paul is saying to us in verse 28 that we should know that all things work together for good to them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose so today I want to say to somebody it's working out but you say pastor how is it working out and it's so painful Where's Reverend Ponto? he said in the crushing you don't get wine from grapes by just gentle caressing them. And I know what that is. Gentle caressing. You don't get wine from grapes by caressing grapes. You get wine from grapes by crushing them. Crushing them. Putting them under intense pressure so that what's inside of them can come out. So right now in church this morning, someone is under intense pressure. In other words, there's some pressure coming at you that it feels like it is crushing every single thing about your life. Your physical life is being crushed. Your, your psychological life is being crushed. Your spirit spiritual life is being crushed but can I tell you that God, God, God is in charge of the entire process and he knows what he is doing. You may say then, Pastor, how is it still so painful? You see, brothers and sisters, one of the challenges that we have as human beings is that we're not omniscient. It means that we're not able to see the big picture one time. We see things in parts. We don't see it as a whole. So we treat our lives in moments. We have timing by second, by minute minutes, by, by hours, by days, by weeks, by months, by years, by decades, by millennium. But I want you to understand when God looks at time, he sees all of time one time. That means he already sees your victory amidst all that you are going through. But even though you can't see your victory right now, I want somebody to respond to the crushing by worshipping because you are worshipping the God who has already guaranteed your victory through Jesus Christ our Lord and all that the enemy is doing and trying he can't stop the end result that God has already foreordained before time don't kill yourself don't blame yourself for how you're responding now I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that I worship amidst every circumstance that I go through there are times when the crushing is too hard. There are times when the thing doesn't seem to be lining up or working out. And there are times when I become quiet and pulled back and reserved. Because I'm saying, God, I gave up my life to serve you. I gave up everything to serve you. Then why is it that it seems like things are not working out? But brothers and sisters, God is in control. God is overseeing the entire process. There are some folks looking at your life conditions now and based on their assessment and their prediction, all they see is doom and gloom. But Jesus says, I'm working it out. Jesus says it's all going to work out for your good because because you are in Christ Jesus. You are in me. You are called to my purpose. Hence it must work out. But let's look at the certainty of the statement. For we know. The knowledge there. It's not referring to just having information. I've never been to South Africa. 
So if Reverend Ponto tells me that this is in South Africa and says something, I have the information, but I may not believe because I've never been there. Whereas if it is something that requires my natural senses to bring confirmation to my belief, hence I may walk around with the information that giraffes are in South Africa. Yes, I have that information, but it is when I'm convicted through belief in an actual way that I actually hold on to it as a fact. But Paul is saying to us here that this knowledge is not just information. This knowledge is conviction. The saints, the believers, the man who follows Jesus Christ must know, know, know. In fact, it must become intimate. It must become personal. It's not just something you hear from myself or from Bishop Lal or somebody else's testimony. It must be a personal conviction with God that I know, I know within my spirit, I know despite what I'm going through, I know despite the critics and what they are saying that all things work together for good to them that love God. Do you know? One of the challenges we have in church, and I'm challenged by this, we have information. Many of us know scripture like crazy. It's okay. That's where it starts. Faith cometh by hearing the word. But how can one hear unless one speak or unless you have the word there? So it's okay to have information, but to have information is not enough. The information must become active in your life, and that becomes active not through God doing some miraculous thing you have to open your faith channel open your faith alignment so that what is being said in scripture can be aligned with your life because whether you believe it or not the word is already powerful remember the word became flesh and dwell amongst us. The word is the breath of God. That means it is in full agreement with who God is. So God doesn't need to do anything with the word anymore. We are the ones who need to receive it and activate it in our lives. So church, there are some times when you hear some things that logically it's not lining up with all things work together for good. But because you know, you know, you have that intimate encounter. You have that in intimate experience. You can hold on to this fact that it's going to work for my good. But pastor, how is it working when I'm lying in a hospital bed and they're telling me that it's time to go? God is still working it out. How can it work out when my mortgage is $1,500 and my salary is $800? But God is still working it out. Brothers and sisters, sometimes when we look at God's logic does not define him, but faith takes us to another step. We're able to believe in the God who called for this universe out of nothing. Ex nihilio is the term. Out of nothing, God called forth everything. Then if a God could speak to nothingness and henceforth comes the world, imagine what God can do amidst all that you are going through. I want somebody in this place this afternoon to understand that there's a divine alignment happening. There's a divine shift happening in your life where God is moving some things in order so that it can work for your good. The challenge is we define good using human standards. If I don't feel pain, that's good. If I'm making a bunch of money, that's good. If I can afford a big house for my family, that's good. If I don't get squeezed too much, that's good. But how are you going to produce if some pressure don't come on board? How are you going to produce if some testing don't start happening? How are you going to overcome if some temptations don't come your way and the Spirit gives you the authority to overcome? Brothers and sisters, nowhere in Scripture depicts life as this bed of rose, this gentle stream flowing downhill. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's 
it's rough. Sometimes death is staring you in the face and you're wondering, God, how is it that I'm in you and this is happening? But God says it's divine alignment. I knew you were going there before you were born. That's the reason why you are still alive because if it was not my plan, you would have been dead from the very first thing that came at you. But because I have a plan for your life, you have made it and you're still making it. Somebody need to let the enemy know that I'm aligned with God. Therefore, my bad is going to turn around in my favor because when you are fixed in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what is happening. It may look bad to others. It may bring pain to your life, but Jesus is working it out. He's fixing some stuff up in his own timing. He's going to cause victory to come in somebody's life like never before because God is an untimed God. He's an irrational God sometimes. Some people won't take a year but yours may take 10 years but it's all for your good because God knows if you get yours in a year it wouldn't be good enough but he says wait 10 years because when my good starts to happen no man, no devil, no demon, no critic nobody at all can stop what I'm doing said God I want somebody in this place to say work get out the statement is certain I know I won't finish this today but it's, the statement is also complete it's not just certain it is complete all things Some things Paul says, right? Good things Paul says. No. All things. On a challenge, church, we look at things from an individualist, individualistic perspective. It's how we are. And again, don't beat yourself up. Psychology has proven this. We look at things sometimes from an individualistic perspective. Hence, we struggle with whole. We struggle with bigger picture. We struggle with completeness. Because what? We are limited by time. And this limitation has also affected our perspective. Therefore, when a man hits a certain age and the world of work says that you are supposed to be at your mastery level now because what? The world of work says when you are 18 to 30, you're on a path of discovery where you're trying to figure out what you should do in life and you're training yourself or you're getting training so that you can jump into this. Then by the age of 30 to 40, you're in some level of, of, of comfort or you're trying to settle because now you're holding on to a job that can take you into the future. But by the time you get to 40, they says you should now become a master or start the mastery process of this job. But there's some folks who are, who are 40 who don't even have the degree to do that which they should do yet. And the world of work says you are late. You are behind time. It's not going to happen again. But you need to tell the world of works about a man called Jesus Christ that he's always on time that he knows what he is doing and if 40 is when I start he's fixing it up he's aligning something for me to reach because the Bible talks about the reapers overcoming the sowers because God has a way to fast track some things in your life that you didn't see coming and I want somebody to understand this afternoon. God, God, just press fast forward in somebody's life because some things that you have missed out on. God said, I'm working it out. I'm doing something that I've never done before. Where's Melanie? Come, Mel. Individually. We look at things from an individualistic perspective. But I want you to understand, think of things as a whole. Think of things as a whole. I have Melanie here. Melanie bakes. Nice stuff. Goodies. Yes. 
Now, I need a teen. You're not afraid of, you're not allergic to chocolate, and you want to eat some cookies in church. Just, just, just run on up here. Run on up here. This is the only time I'll permit you to eat a teen. Um, teen. Bishop Lyle, please escort, usher her out. Usher her out, please. Um, a teen. What? Wait, wait. Almaria, I said teen. All right. Uh, teen. T E E N. In other words, if you are between the ages of 13 and 19, please make your way up here. I need three persons. Here's one. Come on. Two more coming. I understand, guys. You do look young and nice. Um, so you could pass for, for teenagers. But we have access to your birth paper, so we know, we know it's not true. All right. Melanie, I want you to give each one of them a cookie. Please. Now, church, we buy this often. We buy a, a pack of cookies for the kids or even for ourselves. Now I want you to take a bite. Eat. You may not eat all of it. I don't have any drink for you too, so um, please don't choke. But we enjoy the finished product of a cookie. All right? Hold on to your cookie. Now, Mel, I want you to pour a little flour in something. Cookies contain flour. Let me see those who just pour a bowl of flour and just eat it. Anyone? Anyone? You just go to your cupboard, take out the flour, take out a plate, and just fill it up with flour. All right, I want you to dip your hand in the flour and taste it. Does it, does it taste like a cookie? No. Does it taste like a cookie? Does it taste like a cookie? Take yours. Does it taste like a cookie? How would you say it tastes? Nasty. Nasty. Tasteless. Tasteless. Disgusting. Disgusting. Weird. Weird. Now, guess what? The chief ingredient of a cookie is flour. All right. So disgusting, tasteless, weird, nasty. Let, let's do some sugar now, Mel. Let's do some sugar. Let's do some sugar. All righty. Dip your finger in, take a taste. Dip your finger in, take a test. Dip your finger in, take a test. Take a test. How does it taste? Yummy. Yummy. Sweet. Sweet. Sugary. Sugary. Delicious. Delicious. So flour tastes disgusting, weird, but sugar is now tasting sweet, sugary. Okay, give them a few of the, 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 the chocolate pellets right there. All right. Um, okay, take one and taste. Take one and taste. Take one and taste. Take one and taste. All righty. How does it taste? Good. Good. Like heaven. Like heaven. Uh, where's mommy? You need to watch her. Delicious. Delicious. Like milk. Like milk, and I see you're acquiring the taste. It's, it's like, yes, yes. Now, church, flour, sugar, chocolate pellets are all part of the final product of cookie that they're eating. But if you just look at your cookie as the finished product, without thinking about the process that it has been through, you'll never appreciate the flour. You'll never appreciate the sugar. You'll never appreciate the egg. And we won't do the egg one today because, you know. And you won't appreciate the chocolate pellets and the other things. Brothers and sisters, because we don't think as a whole sometimes, we sometimes take one element and focus on that. So if I just take the flour and say, okay, where's the cookie? You can't see this being brown. 
You can't see this being moist because it's powdery and dry. But can I tell you something, church? God throws different elements in our lives so that we can get to the final product. Like I said, Melody, Mel, Melanie Bakes. Mel, I want you to put everything in and I want you to do a little thing that you do in your, in your kitchen as you bake. Because the challenge is we don't understand that a part of God's ordination in our lives is that different things have to be added. Different things are used. So the devil meant it for evil. But God is mixing it into good. God is working in a process that's going to cause the result of your life to be better than the separate ingredients. So right now somebody is going through hell and pain. But God is using that. And he's working it in. Oh God, Mel has all kind of electric stuff up here. But God is the same way. He's mixing. He's mixing. And he has to give it time. Because the finished product is, he's the only one who know what it will look like. Mix it, Mel. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now, can I tell you this? In the mixing, some things lose their properties. Oh, God Almighty. Some things no longer remain the same or look the same. Some things, church, is not in its original form anymore. The same way that some things are in your life, they're going to lose their properties. They're going to lose how they look. Because when God makes it for the good of his people, something great, something great must happen. Thank you, young people. You may go back to your seat. Oh, Mel, let's give it a little bit more mix don't 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 be too tired right now because church sometimes uh, we wonder how some other people's cake uh, mix faster but you need to understand some of us uh, our lives have some stones uh, some big stuff uh, some heavy stuff uh, so one little whip uh, can't bring it to a step one little mix can't bring it to a stage where it should be God has to stay with you God has to hold on to you it has been years it has been years but God is still working it out he's still working on you because when he's done with you your finished product will be great Thank you, Mel. Look at this. Can you see the flower? It's changed. It's changed. So some things are changing in some people's life, Bishop Lal. And they can't manage the change. Because it looks uncomfortable, it looks, it looks disastrous. But can I tell you, for God to align you some, sometimes, uh, things have to break, uh, things have to loose, uh, things have to bust up, uh, things have to mash up. Uh, sometimes for God to align you, you're going to lose some stuff. Uh, but that which you're about to gain uh, is better than that which you're losing. Uh, God is working it out uh, in somebody's life. Uh, I stopped by here long enough this youth Sunday, this blackout Sunday, to tell somebody it's working out. It's painful now, but the mixing, the mixing, the mixing, the completeness, God put everything in there, and he's saying, I'm going to turn it around. Thank you, Mel. So your past, it's hurtful. Your present looks doubtful. Your future you're not even sure of. Satan inserted himself in some little pockets of your life and has done damages. But can I tell you that scars are not wounds, but scars are, are signs of past wounds. But I want somebody to look at your scar and smile because the wound is dry up. The wound is healed. But the scar is there to remind you as to what God has done for you. And I want you to understand that wound went into the package as well for God to bring everything to completion because he's using all things to work together for good to all who love him the certainty of the statement the completeness of the statement but I want us to be careful 
Because the statement has a condition. It has a condition. Church, I'm sorry. But I won't stand up here and preach as though everybody has access to the same thing. Oh God, I'm sorry if I have to burst somebody's bubble today. But the scripture is sure. I believe in word. I'm not one who believe in feelings first than scripture. Scripture hit me hard sometimes, but it is the truth. The scripture says it's conditional. Everybody won't have everything working for their good. It's only those. It's only those. It's only those who are in relationship with Christ Jesus. You have been adopted into the body of Christ but let me encourage someone because adoption papers are still being signed you still have a chance to join in the family of the most high God and join us who name the name of Christ but if you want everything to work for your good you better sign up for a relationship with Jesus Christ you can't want the work but don't want the worker you can't want the healing but don't want the healer you can't want the product of his giving hand but you don't want him I encourage someone drop everything run to Jesus it's the only way things are gonna line up for your good if you don't it's gonna be disastrous but the love of God the love of God which is in Christ Jesus has made a way for every single man the gate is still open the book is still open sign up today make Jesus your Lord make him king of your life and it's easy as believing and repenting the problem is Bishop Lau Sometimes the world wants to accept a doctrine that because God is so all loving, you can just do whatever you want and have his, his work, has the, have the benefits for the believers right there at your doorstep for you to access. It is there, yes, but you can only step into it through relationship. You see, brothers and sisters, relationship provides intimacy, but that intimacy is a permission that comes with the relationship. Therefore, because I'm married to Doreen, it gives me access to some things that other men don't have access to but because of the relationship that I share with her I have this divine access to her it's the same thing with God there's some things church only when you're in alignment with him in your heart body and soul that you will have access to it Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. Because we have to preach this gospel from Bible. This is not perfection. Don't let anybody trick you. You won't be perfect in this body. The Bible doesn't support it. You can be only perfect at the level of glorification. You know what is glorification? Glorification happens at the resurrection. When the trumpet of the Lord sounds. And the dead in Christ come first. And they that remain shall be caught up to meet him. But not only that. This evil flesh will drop. And a new body will rise. A body that can't be tattered. With sin or pain anymore. So there's a certainty. And there's a condition. But there's consequences. Even with the completeness. Why is it that everything needs to work together for good? Let's go to a verse. Verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined. To be conformed, to be conformed to the image of of his son. I say this and I close. When sin came into the world in Genesis, the image of God 
was damaged in man. Go back to scripture. God created man in his own image and likeness. Does that mean that God has hands and feet and head? No, he's a spirit. But God deposited into man some attributes that he had before. And for man to be in his likeness, he gave us some of them. Some of them he didn't because if he does that, he wouldn't be God anymore. So he didn't give us all knowingness. But he gives us access through his spirit to things that we don't know. But he gave us things like lovingness. To be able to love. The ability to love. The ability to care. The ability to be merciful. God shared those attributes with us. But when sin came, sin messed that up. Now, right throughout the Old Testament, a system was in place to try and restore that image. But that image could not be restored through lambs and doves and bulls and all kinds of animals. That was just a, oh God Almighty, that was just a shadow of that which was to come. For the image to be fully restored, you need one outside of this world. You need one who has never, never, never been born into that kind of thing. He's not imputed with sin from the Adamic nature. So God sent forth his son into the world to become the propitiation for our sins, to become the sacrifice. So he stepped down, took on the flesh. We're about to celebrate Easter and he died on Calvary's cross, which means now he gives access for the image to be restored in the lives of his people. People, but church, this restoration is not an immediate action. This restoration is a process. That is why we are still struggling as believers. That is why we are still contemplating with stuff because the conforming is a process, young people. The conforming is a process. It's not an instant action. So you become sons. And daughters instantaneously. But over time you are conformed. Do you understand what that means? We call it sanctification. In other words, every day. Oh God, Bishop Reverend Ponto, come. Bishop Lal, come here quick. Every day. This is just Jesus Christ over there. This is a believer. Every day he's becoming more like Christ. So draw your way closer to Christ. Every day he's becoming more like Christ. So when I examine the life of the believer, you should be better than who you were 10 years ago. You should be better than who you were last week because daily, daily, daily you're drawing closer to Christ. Now when you die, oh God Almighty, and you're resurrected, you are now one with Christ because because the image is now going to be fully restored. But Bishop Lyle, come back over here. Because sometimes this journey comes to a halt. Oh my God, oh my God. And people feel like they stop coming to church and stuff. We have to be careful how we respond to people this time. Because we're like, oh, they have backslidden. Oh, they weren't this in the first place. But sometimes the conforming, the pressing, the crushing, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. But church, I urge you, I urge someone in Praise Cathedral right now this morning, keep pushing, keep inching. And guess what? Paul in another scripture says, you can't do it by yourself. Now let me be deliberate with this. I need a young man, younger than Bishop Lal. I won't tell you his age. Okay, come on. Sometimes, church, you come to a halt. Oh, God, somebody help me in this place. I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now. You come to a halt and you need a little help. Oh, God, and that is why the church has to be a family of God. God. That is why old folks must love young folks and young folks must love old folks because it is a family. Because everyone gets to that moment when you come to a halt and you need a 
push and sometimes a push can't work I want you to grab on to him don't don't damage him you know you know he's my brother oh God take your time and and pull him towards the no no you're putting him the opposite direction go that direction sometimes church we need one person a teenager needs one person in this church a young adult needs one person in this church to help with the process of conforming because the spirit is doing his work but the flesh is resisting sometimes but when a brother stand up beside you and say I'm helping you man when a senior stand up beside you and say despite how you look I'm gonna still push push because the image of Christ must be realized in your life That's why I will never give up on any one of you. Because I understand scripture. I can't give up. Because one day I'm coming to my halt. I am. I've been there. I need the push. I need that text message. I need someone to pop by my house and say, Rev, it's going to be okay. God is working it out for your good. How many of us are helping with the pushing? Because we can push both ways. You can push towards Christ. Thank you. You get the picture. Stand on this side. Or we can push people. You can push them out of Christ. But you push them out of alignment. Oh God Almighty. You know how many persons have been pushed out of alignment? Because of words? Because of action? I feel crazy in this place. I need to bring this sermon to a close. But I beg us as a church. My young people are in this church. Push them this way. This way. Please. Please, Amen. I got that push. Amen. Please push them that way. And hear why it shouldn't be hard. You're heading that way as well. So how do you want to head that way and leave others behind? So while you're going, man, take somebody with you. Yeah. It's like you hear that the church is going to Niagara Falls and you have a nice seven-seater. You alone on the QEW. Blazing. Wow, I can do this in record time. Yeah. There are six other people here at church hoping they could get a ride. While you're going, help someone. I know it's the complete work of God. But God works through us as well. Help someone to conform to the image of Christ. I must close. I can't say anything more. Thank you, brothers. But it's working out. I want to pray for some people. Because you're questioning Romans 8.28. And I didn't even touch 29 and 30. That talks about foreknowing. And predestined. Because I want you to understand this that you're going through. is <clears throat> not a surprise. You know sometimes I'm going home. And my phone alerts me like 15 minutes before to say dairy is clear. I'm like yeah yeah it's going to be a good nice 25 minutes to the house. But then I get down to Trafalgar. <clears throat> And the GPS is saying something else. Because something happens that causes a delay. A delay. And so it is. We're going and something happens causes a delay. But God is working it out. Come. Come church. Doesn't matter what the problem is. 
Don't tell me what the medical report says. It's okay, I respect that. Doctors are not evil people. God has given them the ability to diagnose. But they don't have the last say. Because doctors weren't there. When God created man from the dust of the ground. And decided he's not going to make spare parts and put it aside for them. But he provides healing and deliverance. There's, some, there's still some people need, who need to come. Everything is working out. Right now, everything looks like a pepper pot. All mixed up. But God says, I'm working it out. Come on, I'm still waiting on a few more people. Come. Can I get new wine? Thank you. Come on, church. Young people, come. Come. Young people, come. Don't sit in your seats. You're going to need this prayer. You're going to need this prayer. Because right now, you're under the care of your parents. They're doing everything to protect you. But a lot of people believe that because young people don't pay rent, they don't provide their own food sometimes, that they have no problems. But God says, I'm working it out, young people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the crush. Someone is being crushed. In the press. Someone is wondering, God, why me? You are making when is all this going to end? But right now, I'm speaking Romans 8:28. In the soil, all things, all things, all things. All things. Surrender. But I also want to speak to those who are not yet in relationship with God. Now is the time. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. In the crushing. I'm not necessarily calling you to in services and church activities, though those are parts of the development. But I'm calling you to Jesus. Not to the church, to the Jesus. Soul, when you come to Jesus, then you come to the church. And the church is not Jesus. You are breaking. But the church is the family ground. where the people who serve God. So are you gather. Too. To your it's working out. 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 In the name of Jesus. It's working out. It's working out. It's working out. It's working out. In the name of Jesus. Let it work. Give it a chance to work. Don't jump out of the process. The mixing is going on. The mixing is going on. Oh God, you wonder with all the chunks that are in your life, can they be mixed out to something good? But Jesus, we're not the one doing the process. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who when we don't know how to pray, Paul said earlier, will make intercession. You are through groanings that cannot be uttered oh God almighty someone is at the groaning stage your words your words can't come out can't come out because the crushing is so hard but the spirit the spirit is working on your behalf in the present hallelujah in the crushing Jesus you are making you wine in the soil. I yes, God. Yes, God. Now surrender. Yes, Jesus. You are making new ground. Hallelujah. Because where there is new wine, there's new power. There is new power. Jesus. There is new freedom. What is it that you're going through? All things know this. Don't doubt it. No. All things work together for good. The most one in Christ Jesus. It's 
prayer time. Stop looking through your own eyes. I know logic is strong in our world, but stop looking through your own eyes. Jesus. Look through faith's eyes and see everything working out for your good. Everything is not good, but everything will work for your good. But right now it's not good, but it's going to work for your good. So I'm not going to pretend like if I break my leg, it's good. No, it's not good. What if I don't walk again? But God says, even though it's not good, I'm going to work it out for your good. For your good. And that's why the believer can hold things in paradox. I'm hurting, but I'm rejoicing. I'm bleeding, but I'm worshiping. I'm in need, but I'm giving. That's why the believer can do that. You think I believe that because you worship, you're okay? No, you're not. Things are going downhill. But because you trust in the one who is orchestrating everything, you can still worship. Many of you, you have your prayer sessions. And when others are turning up a beat and are bobbing, you are bawling. Because everything is not good. But God says, I'm working it out for your good. It's prayer time. Father, I kill this flesh right now, lest it wants to take glory. And I glorify you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit that's working things out. I thank you for the process that you have engaged us in. And everybody's process does not look the same. But you're working it out. Father, there are people at this altar who some things in their lives are not good right now. And that's the truth, Lord. You know. It's not good. There's some news. There's some documents. There's some feelings. There's some actualities that are not good. But God, work it out. Work it out. Work it out. For all things work together for good. But God help us to continue to stay in relationship with you. Even when we feel like we don't want to love you anymore. I know you're still going to love us. Because you were thinking of us before we were thinking of you. It's because of that thinking of us that you went to Calvary. That the scripture says before time you were crucified. Didn't mean that you actually died then. But the decision was taken before time that you would come and die. But God, I thank you for who you foreknew, past tense. Who you predestined, past tense. Who you glorified, not yet happened, but still in the past tense. Why? Because in your mind, God, it's complete. That's why Paul recorded it this way. He uses words with pure past tense to indicate even future activities. Why? Because for God it's already finished. Thank you for your finished work on the cross, Jesus. The cross is not insufficient. The cross, the cross is not insufficient. The cross is more than enough for me. But your people, God, are bleeding. They're crying. They're hurting. Because all things don't look like it's working out. But Father, in the pressing, in the pressing, in the pressing, God, make new wine out of us. I speak life into somebody's life. I rejuvenate somebody's spirit through the Holy Spirit. I speak a word into somebody's condition right now and I declare that something good must, 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 must. In the name of Jesus, your word cannot lie. Something good must. And God, 
The devil is going after my young people. He's trying to hurt them. He's trying to tell them foolishness. But God, everything is going to work out in their lives. Every young girl in this house, every young man in this house, Lord, who surrender, who give their heart, and God, some are struggling with this. But Holy Spirit, it's your moment. It's your moment. Holy Spirit, it's your moment, even in the struggle. Even in the struggle. Work it out. Sickness, work it out. Depression, work it out. Frustration, work it out. Emptiness, work it out. Brokenness, work it out. In the name of Jesus. If you're here today, you're not saved. Can I see your hand? If you're not saved, you're not a Christian. It is not to embarrass you. This is to give you a chance. You're not a Christian. I see this one hand right here. You're not a Christian. Let me see your hand. I see that other hand right there, brother. One more. Today, I give you a chance to align yourself. You're like this now, but align yourself. Will you take Jesus home with you as your personal Lord and Savior? Just raise a hand again. Today you're saying yes to a relationship with God. Just put that hand back up. Hallelujah. I see that brother's hand. Brother Kurt, go to him for me, please. Is there anybody else? But put your hand on yourself right now. Stand with me, church, everyone. Put your hand on your, yourself like this. I want you to say after me, God, there are some things in my life that are not good. But I know that you are working them out for my good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the process that you have me in. Help me to develop patience so I can reach the end result that you have in store for me. Greet somebody. God bless you. Thank you for coming to church.